today's topic is rapture lies. You know, it's good to be a little skeptic when it comes to outlandish claims made by others. I remember this gal who was very popular on YouTube for her rapture videos. It got to the place that she was setting a date on when it was going to happen. There's one thing about having high expectations and hoping that a particular day will see the return of Jesus Christ for his bride, the body of Christ, and quite another to keep insisting that it will happen. And then when it doesn't happen, still insisting that it will happen the next day. This gal had thousands of views on her channel, and she was very believable. No, I'm not talking about anyone on my channel or any of my subscribers. I know the difference between high expectations and setting dates. The gal I mentioned, I could give her the benefit of the doubt when she loudly proclaimed that Jesus was coming on a certain date. The thing that was most troublesome to me was not that she set a date, but that when she got her thousands of viewers excited and hepped up, she later came on with a new revelation. And this revelation is she now believed that she was going through the tribulation period. It seems to me that the whole thing was set up and became a maddening joke played on rapture-believing Christians. If I was to go on YouTube today and say, you know, an angel told me that Jesus is coming May 19th. I would get thousands of subscribers and viewers wanting to hear about my experience with the angel. And many would follow me. I could also say that an angel told me that blessed prayer beads could save the sick. Yes, the angel told me that if I would bless these prayer beads, then anyone who bought them and used them will be healed. Now, when they were not healed... And wanting a refund on their prayer beads that they bought, say, $30. I could then say, it was because of your lack of faith. You were so close to being healed, but you gave up faith and gave up on your healing. Here, buy another set of beads and be blessed. Now today, I'm not going to discuss the motives and why people lie. But we as rapture-believing people should beware. I am going to discuss the repercussions of lying. Not only are you breaking the Ten Commandments, but you as a true Christian saved by the grace of God will be shortening your life. In fundamental Baptist churches throughout this land, there's a doctrine taught that I do not hear from other churches. It is called the judgment of the believer. Here is the principal teaching of that belief. Turn your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 32. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. You didn't know that, did you? That Christians are judged? Well, they're not condemned, they're judged, though. I'd rather dwell in grace, but God does chasten a sinning saint. He judges them. He judges them in many ways. Here are a few of the scariest judgments mentioned in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 30. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Of course, by studying the Bible, we know that the sleep judgment is death, and that should terrify us into living as best as we can under the Lord. I'll leave you with this one example, Ananias and Sapphira. The true story is found in Acts chapter 5. But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the price, his wife also being privy to it and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? While it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto man, but unto God. 
And Ananias, hearing the words, fell down and gave up the ghost, and great fear came on all them that heard these things. And the young man arose, wound him up, and carried him out, and buried him. And it was about the space of three hours after, when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. And Peter answered unto her, Tell me whether you sold the land for so much? And she said, Yea, for so much. Then Peter said unto her, How is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door, and shall carry thee out. Then fell she down straight away at his feet, and yielded up the ghost. And the young man came in, and found her dead, and carrying her forth, buried her by her husband. And the Bible says, Great fear came upon all the church, and upon as many as heard these things. You can be sure that what I say I believe, and what I believe I say. To do otherwise is to jeopardize my own temporal life and work in Christ. But how about you? Are you a Christian? Are you one of those lying Christians? You know, the turn from your sin as a Christian is a noble thing. It will extend your life and you'll be filled with the Holy Ghost. Now I want to speak to those they may not even understand what I'm talking about. The judgment of the believer. You have not even passed from death into life. The condemnation of not believing on Christ is upon you. You need salvation and you need it today. I know I was terrified when I came to Christ. I did not want to go to hell. Revelation 9, verse 1 to verse 4. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. The point I want to make about hell is, it is the bottomless pit. Hell is the bottomless pit. And it says in the book of Revelation that this hell or shoal, will be cast into the lake of fire. So hell no longer becomes a bottomless pit, but a lake of fire. But before that happens, it's the bottomless pit. And notice what comes out, according to Scripture, out of the bottomless pit. They are living creatures coming out of the smoke, locusts upon the earth that have power, as scorpions of the earth have power. Now, what were they doing there in hell? I believe they're tormenting the lost souls of man. Now, I believe in different degrees of torment, but they are there to torment the lost souls of man that have a hatred towards God and did not accept the Christ. They are the enemies of God, and they're being tormented day and night by these locusts. Scorpion bites are very painful. And then there's that smoke that comes out of the bottomless pit. Shoot, I don't know about you, but if you ever put out a fire and smoke gets into your eyes, it really burns. And should I talk about the fires of hell? Today you stand as an enemy of Christ, for you have not believed on Christ for your Savior. You need to trust him. For whosoever believeth on Christ shall be saved. And you need to call on him to save you. You know, he died for your sins. You're a sinner. That's why many are going to hell. They have no covering for sin. Jesus is our covering. The blood of Christ cleanses us from all sin. And Christ is our covering. Jesus, save me. Wash me in your blood. Take me to heaven. 
if I should die, or if I should be raptured up into the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Save me, I pray, in his holy name. I believe in the resurrected Christ. I believe in the Son of God, that he's God Almighty. You know, Jesus said to his disciples, he was talking about his death. They thought he was talking at the time about the temple. He said, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. And you know, when he was raised from the dead, they knew what he meant. He was talking about his body. And Jesus rose himself from the dead. Why? Because he is God. And you know the triune God raised Jesus from the dead. You have the spirit of resurrection. And you have the Father. It says the Father raised Jesus from the dead. The triune God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That is Jesus Christ. God Almighty Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. I trust in Christ for my salvation. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. See you later.